Good morning and welcome to Jolie Farms. This morning we're going to talk about why in the world we moved to Ecuador. But first, we want to thank everyone who's subscribed. Thank everyone that's watching our videos. We really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, we hope you'll consider subscribing and uh, hope you enjoy this video. So, reasons why we moved to Ecuador. Why in the world? Well, one of our top items was a healthier lifestyle. We worked a lot in the States and uh, just really runs you down and then you don't eat well. Yeah, we had, uh, I had a lot of health problems in Texas, you know, uh, especially with the high temperatures and the cold extremes was a little tough on me, but I had a heart valve replacement about 14 years ago and I had a, a colon resection done and I had all these allergies and the central Texas cedar season was really bad on me. So we wanted to live somewhere um, that we could get good quality of health care and Ecuador has definitely been that. It has been. Uh, better health care, um, better quality food. Uh, we don't really do fast food. There's not a lot of it around to choose from. So overall, you're eating more whole foods and becoming healthier. Yes, and we have had opportunity to use the health care system, as many of you know, uh, even recently in Loja. And I got to say, it's fantastic. About 10% of the price of the U.S. Um, most of your prescriptions here are extremely cheap. Um, I take Losartan, which is a small potassium pill to help regulate blood pressure. And uh, I can get a month's supply of that for about $2.50. So that's pretty cheap. Um, there are some things, you know, some medicines are going to be a little higher um, and equal with the U.S. because they're brand new cutting edge medicines. So they have to be imported in and usually pay an import fee, that kind of stuff. Reason number two. Reason number two is climate. Yeah, the climate. As I said in Texas, man, it was it was brutal. You know, freezes during the winter and then, you know, 105 degrees in the summer. And many of you are experiencing that right now, the big droughts and the, and the extreme heat. And that was just really hard. And again, with the allergy thing. Um, the climate here, I would say, is as close to perfect as you can get. For us, it is. I mean, we live up in the mountain, and it's a little bit cooler. You can go into town. It's about 10 degrees warmer. You can go to the next town over. It's probably 10 degrees warmer even than that. So you can really pick and choose your perfect climate. And the climate range doesn't go to extremes. It stays pretty much within a 15 to 20 degree variance. Yeah, the, you know, the microclimates within 10 or 15 minutes of here is just, just completely different. That's why we encourage people to come and visit and see different areas. Um, right now, it's about 9 o'clock in the morning here. Uh, kind of a cool night last night. Um, but it's about, I would say, 70 degrees right now, huh? It's not mm. too warm yet. Yeah, no, too cool. no, it's not warm at all. You know, yeah, 65 wear, to 70. I wear a long sleeve shirt just because my arms get a little cool this early in the morning. Um, the windy season's a little tough here, as we've mentioned before. Um, we had 40 mile an hour winds earlier in the week, and that was not a lot of fun. Today is a beautiful day. Sun's out, no wind. Everything's great. So it's, it's about as perfect as you can get. Um, you get in areas like Malacatos, they're much more humid and you know, a lot warmer, but plants and things will grow well there. So we're kind of um, a little more selective here on what we can grow. And some people like the heat. So we Some have friends like that it. really like the heat, but uh, for us, this is, this, we found our perfect climate. So we really wanted to go to a country that had um, warm and inviting people. And gosh, gang, we looked at a lot of different countries. We'll just tell you, now we didn't travel to all of them, but we found some really cool countries. Um, Ecuador just seemed to call us as home. We had a, a tick boxes and it, it ticked off all of our, our boxes and, the box of, of wanting to warm, inviting people was very important. Um, some countries were not as accepting of Americans. Um, and I would say there's probably a few people here that aren't very accepting. But for the most part, Ecuadorians are just wonderful people. We've established some great friendships with Ecuadorians and um, some that we consider to be our Ecuadorian family. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, the nice thing about Ecuador, too, is that they really respect their senior citizens. Now that I'm 65, I get to go in this special line at the bank for reserved for seniors. Um, not because I'm special here, 
Um, and that uh, we also get a discount on the internet, things like that. And it's a pretty substantial discount. Um, there's a deep respect for senior citizens here. And uh, they really um, are very strong in, in family. Money is secondary here. Family is much more important than money. Um, used to be that way in the United States, I think. You know, back prior to 1960, things were a lot more family orient oriented than they are now. Uh, and it's something that's kind of sad that the U.S. has lost a bit of that. Ecuador still has it. We always say Ecuador is about 50 years behind the U.S. And we like that about Ecuador. It's, it's behind in a good way. So it still focuses on people interactions and uh, family. And it's, it's a really pleasant change. Yes, I was not um, um, at all disappointed in, in the relationships we've developed here. Um, as you know, there's people from all over the world here in Vilcabamba, but the Ecuadorian culture here and the nice, warm uh, friendliness is great. People always say good morning and good afternoon and, you know, when provecho when you're eating in a restaurant as they walk by. It's just, uh, you know, the formalities are very important here. They don't ignore you. They don't just walk down the street and, and act like they don't see you. I mean, they almost always will acknowledge that you're there and you know, greet you in some way. Business conversations here always start out with, how are you? How is your family? You know, is everything good? Um, it's almost considered rude to just jump right into business. Um, they want to uh, show you that they care about you and what's happening in your life. Yes. All right. Next one. Affordability. Yeah, this is uh, definitely an affordable country to live in. Since we were retiring early before our Social Security was in place, my Social Security, uh, I was 60 years old when we came here, and um, so I was not yet on Social Security. And so we had to live off of our principal. And so we wanted to be sure that we could live in a place where we could really afford to retire early. The United States was not going to be that for us. Uh, taxes, et cetera, were just too intense for us to think about retiring there. And we had looked in the U.S. at, well, we we're working seven days a week, we're working so hard, working ourselves to death. What if we just bought a nice lake house somewhere to go on the weekends and relax? We discovered we could afford the lake house, but we couldn't afford the taxes on the property. We couldn't afford to keep our farm and pay the taxes. We'd always have to work. So we saw a window open here in Ecuador where it was affordable and we could come here and retire early and enjoy our life while we're still are physically able. Yes, definitely. I think that food... Um, is much more affordable, don't you? Food, I think food you can get by. I mean, again, we, we don't do a lot of the processed foods. We do a lot of more whole foods. And you can probably get by on your food. I mean, and, and Tienda's in town. You can, $5 buys you a week's worth of food. Um, and you can go to Loja and pick up staples and paper goods and stuff like that and still stay affordable. So, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month just um, on utilities and food, um, not rent. I mean, you can rent anywhere for, I don't know, $100 on up. Um, so it's your choice of what type of um, home you're looking for. But uh, once you get your basics down, it's very affordable. Yeah, I would say, you know, in the restaurants, there's a lot of restaurants here. Um, you can get typical Ecuadorian lunch for $2.50, $3.00. Depending on where you are, we saw it in Cuenca for two and a quarter. Mm -hmm. So that includes soup, you know, includes a main dish, a little salad, and a drink goes with that typically. Right. Um, some type of horchata or some drink. So, uh, yeah, lunch is very, very reasonable. Um, but you can spend a lot on lunch. You know, if you go to one of the restaurants like we like in Loja, you know, lunch there is going to be, you know, $12 and up. Uh, but it's a nice steak. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's why we like to go there occasionally. So, yeah, I think it's very affordable. Our Internet's cheap. Our electricity is cheap. We run three houses on this property. And, uh, you know, our electricity is $75 a month or less, mm -hmm. just depending on what's going on. Water's, you know, 8 or $9 a month. Um, our propane gas, we buy a tank of gas. It's about 3 bucks, And so each one of the residents here go through one tank of gas per month. So very affordable. Very. We like it. Next on the item. Last one on the item is security. We wanted to live in a country where we felt reasonably secure. 
And I tell you, most of the countries we looked at um, were way safer than the United States. There's a lot going on in the United States right now that was not going on five years ago when we moved here. And I guess that's a good point to make is we're basing these judgments off where we were five years ago when we decided to retire and move to Ecuador. Some things have changed. Um, Ecuador is still a pretty safe country. Street crime, yes, especially in the cities. Um, you can get your cell phone stolen if you're not paying attention. Um, we knew someone that had a necklace grabbed off their neck over in Cuenca. Um, someone running by grabbed it and took off, gold necklace. Um, you just don't wear those kind of things here, you know. It's not One, it's, it's a little, I don't know, out of place. And so you're going to make yourself a target if you're not careful. Um, now, we do live behind a big brick wall that previous owners met. We like our wall. Um, keeps us safe. Uh, there have been a rash of break-ins here in Vilcabamba lately. That seems to have stopped. And um, there's a lot of reasons why that stopped. Um, but we won't get into that. So security is important to us. And we feel very secure living here. We've never had a problem. Everyone's always been nice. But we're also very situationally aware. Um, we see someone following us down the street in a big city. We'll stop and change direction, go into a shop, make sure that, you know, we're not being targeted. Um, and it's usually people wearing backpacks with cell phones in them. Not paying attention to is it zipped up? Are you closed up and that type of thing? But the petty street crime, I mean, it's it's global. So that type of thing is everywhere in the world. And um, here is no different. I think you have more of that in the bigger cities little bit less in the smaller towns. So it just varies. So about a month ago, I'm walking with a friend of mine in Loja and we're on a busy street waiting for the street light to change. And he's got a backpack on and there's all these people behind us. And one Ecuadorian young man who spoke English uh, reached up and said, sir, your cell phone's sticking out of your backpack. The zipper's broken. Someone's going to steal your cell phone. And, you know, we thanked the young man profusely. Um, had I thought about it, we would have tipped him, but he was off and gone. But he was the kind of young man that probably wouldn't have accepted a tip for that. He just didn't want to see someone uh, unnecessarily lose their electronics. True, true. So security is important. And actually, I'd like to take a moment to just talk about visa. Um, so some countries are harder to get a visa in. The United States, getting a visa in the United States is kind of expensive and a long process. Um, we um, found that Ecuador was quite easy, but we used a great facilitator. Um, now, notice I said facilitator, not a lawyer. We used a great facilitator, and um, she made our, our permanent residency process so simple mm -hmm. and so easy. Um, and it really doesn't cost a lot. They change these rules constantly here, um, as many other countries change. Sure. Um, so Ecuador is very serious about immigration and uh, they don't like what they call irregular people who are here, not lawfully, they call irregular. So they don't like that. They have um, traffic stops where they check for those kind of things for people who don't have the right paperwork. Um, so we felt like this country was very easy to get our permanent residency in. And we'll think about citizenship someday. It's we're coming so, to the point where we're, we're eligible. And uh, so we'll definitely consider that strictly from uh, having a, a second passport would be nice. Sure. Um, but um, we didn't leave the United States because we hate the United States. Um, we don't like what happens politically many times, certainly. But we still love the United States. We miss our family, miss our friends. Um, but this is kind of our home country right now. And uh, for all we can see, it will remain that way forever. Huh? Sure. I think so. We don't see any reason to leave here. We love it here. Again, it ticks all the boxes. It does. When you sit here in the perfect climate in, for us, and you hear about 100 plus degree temperatures back in the States or freezing temperatures, you just sit and go, oh, I don't miss that at all. Don't miss it at all. Yeah, we love to sit here in conversation corner and mm -hmm. just enjoy the cool morning and the warm sunshine. And it's, it's just, there's more days like this right here than there are windy or rainy, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it's just pleasant all the time. Something's always growing. Something's always blooming. 
Mm -hmm. um, it is a much slower paced lifestyle than what we were used to in the United States. Probably the first six months, I uh, was a little worried about uh, I might get bored, but that's not been the case. Um, you find things to occupy your time. Boy, do you. Or they find you. Or they find you. <laughs> True. And we do enjoy the relationships and the friendships that we've built here. Um, and, you know, friendships take time. And so that takes up part of our day, uh, just uh, enjoying our friends and and uh, going out and socializing. True. All right. Well, I think that's everything on our list. So why in the world did we move to Ecuador? It checked all the boxes for us. It still checks the boxes for us. Enjoy today's video and hope you will uh, subscribe. Have a great day.